Good evening, and welcome to Newcastle After Dark. We are your hosts, the management. Coming to you from the land of warehouse sales and Yumeido Hibachi, bringing you films that are a feast for the mind. Tonight's film is 1964's Seance on a Wet Afternoon, starring Kim Stanley. This has Richard Attenborough, Mark Eden, and Nanette Newman. And this is described as a quiet, moody, psychological crime thriller. Now, that may not sound like it has anything to do with the supernatural right. or the macabre, but it does. But it does. In its own ways, it really does. Yes. Yeah. And this is a superb film. Oh, yeah. Uh, the acting in this is A+. Plus. Just Absolutely. Just fantastic. Absolutely. And this one is really surprisingly forgotten. Yeah. Yeah, truly it is. And it's a shame that it is. Oh. Because this is this really is a fantastic film. Yes, powerhouse performances all around. Yes. So sit back, relax, and enjoy 1964's Seance on a Wet Afternoon. A message? Yes? It's a young face. He's waving. Peaceful. Oh, very peaceful. Oh, no, 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 shh. No, my darling. It's all right, my precious. No. No more. No more.
naughty. Raining like that, very naughty. Turn on the light, Billy. Put the thing up. Test it from the outside tonight. Of course, it's not what it used to be. Not his room any longer. But Arthur understands. We're doing it with his blessing. That's just how he put it. He said, You have my blessing. <laughs> I'm a little bed, this. I remember when I slept in it. Very comfy. You never slept in that bed. Yes, I did, dear. That time you will remember. No, I don't remember. No, well, it's not important, dear. What you say, Billy, what anybody says is important. This was always Arthur's bed. Until he went to school. I've never allowed anybody to sleep in it. Yes, of course, dear. Well, she'll be nice and comfy in this. What, um... What does it look like? Very neat. No, no. I mean, what does it all look like, the overall effect? If you'd never seen it before and you suddenly woke up in that bed, where would you think you were? In a hospital. Oh, yes. Exactly, in a hospital. Aren't very clever ones, huh? It's going to work, Billy. The plan's going to work. Yes? Perfect. Did you put the extra strong bulb in? Yes. The 150 watt? Well, you saw me put it in. Good. It's fine, then. I couldn't see anything. Have you seen the dust? I thought old Mother Jackson was supposed to have done this out before she went on holiday. Well, we can live with it. I can't live with it. I hate dust. Mm, it's lovely for her. She's on abroad this year, you know. I said to her, where are you going for your holidays this year, Mrs. Jackson? Well, I felt sorry for her. I thought she'd be stuck at Margaret or somewhere, getting a usual third-degree burn. Mm -hmm. Not a bit of it. We're going to France, she said, in my Cyril's new car. You can imagine that, can't you? Five of them crammed in the Mini with her Cyril at the wheel. <laughs> right now. Still, it suits our purposes. Further away, the better, till it's all over. Huh? You want that on, do you? 
Yes. It helps me to concentrate. Of course, it would be a marvelous opportunity not to have her back. I mean, we're not giving up a treasure or anything like that. She only does it for the gossip. And we can do without that. According to the directions, it takes a couple of hours. So we might as well make a start. You think we ought to start now, do you? Yes. <laughs> That's what I just said. Put the scissors down, Billy. Really. You can finish that later. Well, we're not having any uh, last-minute doubts, are we, Billy? You know it's too late for that. We have to go through with it, exactly as planned. Now's the only time with Mrs. Jackson safely away. Yes, I know. You want that car, don't you, Billy? You know the one you saw? You want things to be different? Not only for me, but for all of us. I'm not doing it for the car. The car isn't why I'm doing it. Listen, Billy. Listen, will you? Carefully. You know that I can never tell when you're really listening to me. And try to understand, Billy, what I am. What I am can't just be thrown away, can it? And it's not wrong. What we're going to do is not wrong. We're doing it for his sake. Arthur wants me to be recognized for what I am. I mean, I can't tell you. He, he convinced me. I had to be convinced myself before I told you. I mean, I know it's different for you. I've known that all along, and I do try to make a little... So quiet in here. Suddenly so terribly quiet. Did you turn that off? No, dear, you did it yourself. I did. I turned... I wanted it on. Why would I turn it off? Well, then it must have been me. Why did I ever marry you, Billy? I don't know, dear. Why did you? Because you're weak. And because you need me. Well, those are two good reasons. We've had so much sorrow, Billy. Too much sorrow. But it's all going to be changed now. Everything's going to be different. You know what I sometimes wish? I sometimes wish I were ordinary like you. Dead ordinary. Ordinary and dead like all the others. Too much sorrow, Billy. And you can't buy your own happiness at the expense of somebody else's unhappiness. Who was it that said that? Do you know? Yes. Who? Arthur said it. Oh, yes. Of course. Fancy you remembering. He didn't say it to you, did he? No, dear. You tell me. Oh, yes. Funny he's never been close to you. Not that I blame you. It's easier for me. You don't have my gift. It all might have been different if Mummy hadn't left me this house. She wanted me to have it. 
They read it out. The solicitor read it out of the will. He sat just there. We've never really quarreled, have we? Except about this house. Have you ever thought of that? Yes, I've thought about it, dear. Still, I have made it up to you in other ways, haven't I? Yes, lots of ways. And you do need me, don't you? Well, say it then. <laughs> I don't have to say it. I wouldn't be here, would I, if I didn't? No. But I do think you had second thoughts just now. Not that I mind. I mean, I understand. It's not easy for you. But you did have second thoughts, didn't you, Billy? Well, not second thoughts as such, no. Well, what then? Well, as you said, I don't have your gift. Yes, you're right. I do keep forgetting that. You see, when they first found out when I was little, you remember I told you about my aunt? She was the first one. She knew. She tumbled it. She used to go on endlessly to Mummy in this room. I used to hear them. I used to creep to the top of the stairs to listen. And then at Sunday tea, all the family came. And I had to perform. I had to get up and do my party piece. And in the end, I began to enjoy it. To look forward to it. It was nice being different. I mean, you didn't get told off. You just had all the nice things, all the... You see, it wasn't a trick. It was there all those years ago here in this room. And it was real. It was happening to me. I didn't have to make it up. Don't you see? That's why. That's why it has to happen, Billy. Otherwise, what's it all been for? Just to take a collection every Wednesday afternoon, rain or fine. I mean, eight pounds ten and the biscuit tin. It has to be more than that, Billy. It has to be. And Arthur's? Quite certain, you see. If you're ready. Well, then. I mustn't disappoint you.
Excuse me. Are you Mr. Clayton's chauffeur? Yes. The, the headmistress, Miss Bray, she's got a letter for you to give to Mr. Clayton. Oh, thank you. Oh, no, 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 I, I, I haven't got it. She wants to give it to you in person. Oh, right. See you in a tick, Amanda. Open the door, that's a good girl. Come on, be a good girl, open it up. Uh, I won't hurt you, I promise. It's only a game, I promise, cross my heart, it's only a game. further away next time, you'll hit someone. Don't be afraid, dear. Don't be afraid. It's only a game.
One more good rinse. Can you manage? Yes, I can. I'll just go have another look at her. She's still all right. Well, don't fuss. The worst thing you can do with children is to fuss. It confuses them. Read this to me, will you? I want to hear heart sounds. Here, use this in case we want to make corrections. You... You want me to read it out loud, do you? Yes. Well, could we have that a little quieter, please? Oh, Billy, I do wish you weren't such a bore about good music. Dear sir, this is to notify you that your oh, daughter... Uh, that's not a good start. Too formal. Cross it out. We don't need an introduction. Oh. This is to notify you that your daughter is in our possession. She is quite safe, and if you follow instructions, she will remain safe. <clears throat> By this time, you will have informed the police. That was to be expected, but do not tell them about this letter. Dis oh, oh, full stop after letter. Do not tell them about this letter. Destroy it. We are professionals, and we mean business. You will find enclosed a lock of your daughter's hair as proof. Wait, uh, change that. Lock means curl. Make it, uh, piece her hair straight. Uh, or just some. Piece? Yes. I'll enclose a piece of your daughter's hair as proof. Your instructions are as follows, full stop. One, you will put an advert into the personal column of tomorrow's evening standard to the effect that you are willing to oblige and sign it, willing to oblige and sign it with your Christian name. Good. This advert you will address to Longfellow, full stop. Two, you will get a blue BOAC overnight bag and put into it 25,000 pounds. <clears throat> you will be informed later by telephone where and when you are to deliver the money. After delivery, your daughter will be returned unharmed. But if these instructions are not followed perfectly, or if there is any attempt to detain the man to whom it doesn't have an, an E, does it? What? Whom? No. Oh, you've got one. Um, if there's any attempt to detain the man to whom you will give the money, you will never see your daughter alive again. Signed Longfellow. I suppose we need that last bit, do we? Yes, we need it. <gasps> Even though we don't mean it. Even though we don't mean it. They have to believe we mean it. Yes, I... I suppose the truth of the matter is I haven't... taken it in yet. What we've done. But what have we done? We've borrowed a child. That's what we've done. Yes, they have another word for it. 
We have borrowed a child, Billy. Borrowed. Borrowed. Just keep saying that. Get on with your letter. I'll be back down shortly. Very good, Billy. It won't be a joke anymore, will it? Once you've posted it. Never was a joke, Billy. <laughs> no, but you know what I mean. Once you post it, no one else is going to use the word borrow. Oh, Billy. How many times must I tell you? What we are doing is a means to an end. Now, you agree with the end, don't you? Well, then you must agree with the means. You can't have one without the other. The Burmese, after I leave. But we're not going to keep the money, and the child won't be hurt in any way. No. Except if it goes wrong. Who's going to believe that? I mean... We can't expect anybody to believe the real reason. The trouble is, Billy, you lack imagination. You miss all the good things in life just because you won't reach that bit further to touch the truth. Say you love me. I love you. And you couldn't live without me, could you? I mean, you tried it once and you had to come back. And I took you back, didn't I? And you made me a promise. Remember? You promised me. Yes. I promised you. Go on, post your letter. And come back safely. Say, come back safely. And come back safely. Oh, God, oh, Jesus. Girl missing. Where? Oh. It's the only daughter of Charles Clayton, wealthy chairman of Clayton Industries Limited, was last night stated to be missing from home. Doesn't say much, does it? They never do at first. That doesn't worry me. I want it to start slowly. You get a breakfast, I'll change. Good 
just going to take your temperature, and then you can have your breakfast. Who are you? Nice scrambled eggs, and we don't want them to get cold, do we? Lie back and open your mouth. I want to know who you are first. I'm your nurse. What nurse? Nurse Johnson, under the tongue. There, no talking now. You're in hospital. Ever been in hospital before? Well, then you'll know how to behave. You didn't take that long enough. Didn't I? No, Dr. Loxton takes ages. Why am I in hospital? Why? Yes. Caroline says you only go to hospital to die. Who's Caroline? My best friend. Well, Caroline is just being silly. No, she isn't. She's very clever. She's a Christian scientist. Oh, is she? Here we are. What have I got? German measles. Had it. Oh, no, this is a very special kind. Double German measles. Very catchy. Is it very special? Hmm, very. That's why you've got a room to yourself. I was at school, I wasn't ill. Yes, you were. You were sent home from school, don't you remember? Now, eat your breakfast. Why have you got that on your face? I have to wear it in case I catch your measles. You eat it up. She'd be going. You didn't tell her she'd be going home soon. I think you ought to tell her that. I, I thought, thought you were going to tell her that right away. Well, I forgot. You know, with children, you, know, you have to tell them. Set their little minds at rest right away. Billy, what do you know about children? They're really quite adaptable children. They're like. Like uh, little animals. You know how animals look in the pet shop, in the windows? When you see them, they... You take them home and you feed them, and they adapt in a matter of hours. Billy? Yes, dear, you're, you're, you're right, I'm sure. Well, you remember what Arthur was like at her age? I mean, they're, they're quite pleased to be sick. Makes them feel... Different and important. Billy. I wonder, could you help me? Uh, do you know where uh, Mr. and Mrs. Clayton live? Well, in what connection is it, madam? I want to see Mr. Clayton. Do you have an appointment? No, I don't. Well, this is the house, but I don't think Mr. Clayton can see you. It's not official business, is it? No. But I really do think he would see me if he knew what I'd come about. Well, have you come about, then? Something that vitally concerns him at this moment. Well, I'll ask up at the house. Come with me. Hey, miss. I'd like to see Mr. Clayton.
We'll just have to cancel. That's no problem, sure we? Thank you, Colin. Yes, officer, what is it now? Well, I'm sorry to trouble you again, sir, but I believe this lady has some information regarding... This is my card, Mr. Clayton. Who is it, darling? Look, I don't know, sweetie. I'm just finding out. All right, officer, I'll deal with this. Oh, uh, perhaps you better hang on a moment, will you? Carla, will you ask Mrs. Miles... Oh, it's all right. Mrs. Miles, will you get the constable a cup of coffee, please? Would you like one, darling? No. Will you, uh, will you come this way, Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Savage? Oh, I'm so sorry. Um, darling, this is Mrs. Savage, my wife. No, I'm sorry. That's all I have to say. Who's that? Nothing, Mr. Clayton. Just another newspaper. Yep, some cigarettes she had already. Uh, a couple of packets, box of 100 in. Oh, I'm sorry, sit down. Yes, Mrs. Savage, what information do you have? Well, I'm afraid I don't have anything definite that is definite to you. But I read the papers this morning and I felt I must come. You see, last night I had a dream. A dream? Yes. Mrs. Savage, I don't want to be rude, but we've been up all night. Now, I'm sure you came here with the best of intentions, but we've had offers of help from other people like yourself. We had a man in here half an hour ago who offered to find our daughter with the aid of a divining rod. You do see, don't you? Yes, of course, but uh, there is a difference. You see, I am a professional medium, and my dreams are not without significance. What sort of dream was it? I saw a little girl sitting alone, but she was lost. I was quite sure she was lost. Of course, that in itself wouldn't mean much, but the symbolism was very strong. Symbolism? Yes. The little girl was surrounded by clay, wet clay. And when I read your name in the papers, I, I coupled it with the clay. I see. Darling, you don't have any cigarettes, do you? Yeah. No, no, I haven't. And, uh, and that means something, does it, Mrs. Savage? Oh, yes. Yes, the connection between the clay and your name was too strong to ignore. Was that all? No. The child in my dream used some names. Names? Yes. She said, uh, Caroline, first of all. That's her best friend at school. Yes, well, she kept saying that. And then, just before my dream ended, she said, Hedge. Could that mean anything? Yes, Hedgy, that, that's her toy. It, well, it's a sort of funny old hedgehog all falling to pieces. She won't ever sleep without it. Well, it, it must be that, mustn't it, darling? You see, she had it with her when... Well, she'd taken it to school with her. Something to go on, isn't it? Nothing else, Mrs. Savage? No, just those three things. Mrs. Savage, you... you are a professional medium, are you? Yes. Darling, what do you think we ought to do? Now, just a moment, sweetie. Mrs. Savage, again, I don't want to appear rude or ungrateful. But what you've just told us, you could have learned by accident or by... Half a dozen other different ways. People gossip. I have a staff. They gossip. You could have read about it in a magazine. They're always writing things about my wife. Anyway, you could have come by this information in a dozen different ways. Yes, but the point is that I didn't. I had a dream. The point is, Mrs. Savage, and forgive me, I don't know why you came to see me. I'm not the police. If your dream means so much, and presumably you think it does, I find it very odd that you didn't go to the police first. Now, let me ask you a question, Mrs. Savage. What do you want out of it? Well, what's in it for you? You must have some angle. Oh, you think I'm after money? Well, it's possible, isn't it? Eh? People do do things for money. It has been known. I'm so sorry. I'm obviously wasting your time. But I do understand. Goodbye, Mrs. Clayton. And don't worry. I know your little girl is safe. You don't know anything of the kind, so don't give my wife any false hopes. 
I'll tell you something that wasn't in your dream, Mrs. Savage. And I might just as well tell you because it'd be in the papers any moment. Our little girl has been kidnapped. She's being held for ransom. No, no, exactly. Thank you for coming. Yes, speaking. I'm terribly sorry, Mrs. Savage. It, it's just that we're both so worried. No, I've got nothing to say. Although I do think the fact that no, they've got nothing. in touch with us means that she's safe, don't you? I mean, they usually do this sort of thing for the money, don't they? Nothing else. I'm quite sure she'll be all right, and I do understand your husband not having time for me. No, nothing. But I'm never wrong about these things. Thank you very much for coming. Anything helps at the moment. Oh, Sheila, will you show Mrs. Savage out? Thank you. Look, if I get one more call from you, I'll have the phone disconnected. What about those bastards, darling? They want to take a picture of you and me in her bedroom. What with them and that phony bitch and her stupid dreams? I've just had enough. Yes. Well, I don't care about any of them, really. I don't care what pictures they take or who finds her. Just as long as we get her back. Excuse me, ma'am. Excuse me. I wonder if I could trouble you for one of those cards. I'm sorry. Your name and address, ma'am. I'm supposed to make a note of everybody who comes and goes. Oh. Yes, of course. Purely for the record. Thank you. Oh, by the way, um, those buds hanging about the gate. Reporters. Take my tip and walk right past. You don't want to get mixed up with them. Oh, no. Of course not. Thank you for telling me. I'll use the other gate. She wants some cocoa and some potato crisps. We haven't got any, have we? We have cocoa. What about crisps? Listen. Turn out the light.
go and see what she wants. And put your mask on. I'll get her a drink ready. It slipped off. Oh, dear. Well, accidents will happen. Or perhaps you'd fallen out of bed. The nurse is just making your drink. Did you enjoy your dinner? I don't like eating in bed. You get all crumbs. Yes, I found that. Are you really a doctor? Yes, of course. You don't smell like a doctor. Don't I? Well, what do doctors smell like? All pepperminty. Well, we'll have to do something about that then, won't we? Nurse will be up in a tick. You'll be all right. Was it? Oh, uh, she she just dropped her tray. She's really bright, you know, really quite bright. What about the police? Will they be back? Yes, but not tonight. Watch that, will you? It's about to boil. Well, they must suspect something. Everyone's under suspicion once they've made contact. I knew they'd call. They were just a little more efficient than I'd imagined, that's all. I'm not ready for that. I, I think we should take her back now. Tonight, while there's still time. Oh, I need some sugar. Did you hear what I said? Sugar. Look, it's not going to work. If we do something now, we might just get away with it. What would we get away with, Billy? Nothing. We'd just be taking all the risks with none of the benefits. Myra, we can... I committed a criminal act. I kidnapped her. I didn't borrow her. From there on to us. They made a call, that's all. Part of a routine investigation. If they'd had any strong suspicions, they never would have left so easily, now would they? But they'll be back. You said so yourself. Yes, they'll be back. Not tonight. They won't be back tonight. First thing tomorrow morning. What difference does it make? A great deal of difference, Billy. She won't be here tomorrow morning. Billy, what was our plan? Our beautiful, perfect plan. How brave, how excited we were. Don't you remember conceiving it? Have you forgotten, Billy? We were going to do something so perfect, so pure, that would harm no one, would only do good. And we've made a start, a wonderful start. It's all going exactly as we said. And when we've done the rest, when we've got the ransom money, and it's all over the front pages, that's when it can all come true for us, Billy. I'll make it come true. I'll tell them where she can be found and where the money is hidden. Well, I have to do this little lie, Billy, so they can know the whole truth. That's what you want, isn't it? It's what you've always wanted, ever since... Well, ever since I can remember. You've wanted nice things for me, haven't you? That's true, isn't it? Yes, that's true, dear. So you know what you have to do tonight, just as we rehearsed it. Welcome back. Well, here we have the beginnings of this film. And playing Myra is Kim Stanley. Yeah, um, you know she was in some other really good movies, uh, The Goddess uh, and Francis, but you know her real love and what she did the most was theater. Yes, 
and when she received poor reviews for one play that they had done, she said she would never act again. It's hard to believe and that she, she didn't. would get poor reviews, you know, in the first place. I mean, I think she's I, phenomenal. Fantastic. I yes. really do. I mean, she is 100% believable. Yeah. And the she conveys the emotions that she's thinking. Yeah. Powerful, man. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yep, absolutely. Uh, Richard Attenborough, uh, who's had a great career, tons oh, yes. of movies, um, A Bridge Too Far, uh, The Great Escape. He was in Magic. Mm -hmm. Of course, uh, he was in Jurassic Park. Yes. And uh, also you have Mark Eden. Mark Eden, we were just talking about Mark we Eden. Yes. Um, he was in Curse of the Crimson Altar, which we just did a review for. Yeah, on our Patreon. Yeah. Um, he was also um, on The Saint. Yes. And he had a part uh, in Dr. Zhivago. Yes. Uh, playing his wife is Nanette Newman. And she was in The Stepper Wives. Yeah. Uh, she was also in uh, The Raging Moon. Yes. And she she's pretty spectacular herself. Yeah, you know, I mean, I mean, really, uh, the entire cast here, um, it's not a big cast. Right. Uh, but very good. Yes. Yeah, very good. And this was directed by Brian Forbes. Yeah, uh, who uh, directed uh, Stepford Wives. Yes. Um, he did some acting as well. Uh, he was one of my favorites from the 50s, which was Quartermass 2. And at one point, he was the head of EMI Films. Yes. And he was also married to Nanette Newman. Yeah. yeah. So, now the interesting thing is this music in this film is just as fabulous as the acting. Yeah, it is. Uh, that's John Barry. Yes. Um, he had done... Uh, like tons of music for the James Bond movies. I mean, you know, like Dr. No and from Russia with Love. Just, yeah. Just tons of those. Yes. Yeah. He's famous for the James Bond theme. Yeah. Um, he had done music for Midnight Cowboy, um, King Kong from the 70s, The yes. Cotton Club. Yes. So he is uh, in that territory with Jerry Goldsmith. He's up there. He is. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He's up there. And it's strong, this music. It is. It is. And, you know, it's not it's not overlaid with too much music all the time. Right. But it's fantastic. Yes. And if uh, at this point this movie hasn't pulled you in, I mean, whew, it's, yeah. it's pretty heavy. Yeah. And the second half, it, again, it just gets better. Oh, man, does it ever. Yeah, it really does. So let's get back to Seance on a Wet Afternoon. Yes, Barnet Three. Charles Creighton here. This is Longfellow. Keep him talking as long as you can. Yes, yes, I'm here. Where's my little girl? What have you done with my baby? Oh, please tell me she's all right. I, d I. Hello. Hello. Yes, well. <clears throat> Listen carefully. Yes, yes, I'm listening. Have you got the money ready? Yes. In the BOAC bag? Yes. <clears throat> then listen to me. Go alone to Leicester Square, to the phone box nearest to the taxi rank, in the northwest corner. Yes, sir? Yes. Keep him talking, they're tracing it. Yes, yes, I'm listening, yes. Go inside it and wait there. Don't do anything. Don't use the phone. Just go inside and wait there. Have you got all that? Yes. Um, would, would you repeat that last part again, please? Northwest corner, last booth. Northeast? West, west. 
I've said it three times. Have you got it now? Yes. Well, that's all then. Wait! Don't hurt my baby. That bleed looks on. That could have been fatal if I hadn't made you turn your pockets out. You know that, don't you? Yes, I'm... I'm not a, a master criminal, you know. Yes, absolutely. Shall I take her? No, I can manage. You take care of those. You're sure she won't wake up? She couldn't possibly. I've been thinking, what if the police haven't been by the time I get back? What? Oh, yes, that is something. Well, we'd better have a signal then. I'll, uh, I'll hang a shirt on the line and leave it there until the police have been and gone. Yes, right. If it's still there, keep driving round and coming back to check. Right. Otherwise, stick exactly to the plan.
I'm a police officer, Detective Sergeant Beadle. Could I have a word with you, Mrs. Savage? Oh, well, yes, of course. Won't you come in? Excuse me. Please? We, uh, we called last night, but uh, you were out, I think. Oh, yes, we were. It's not about the radio license, is it? No, it's nothing like that. No, it's nothing at all, really. It's just a check. It's in connection with that little girl missing from Barnet. <laughs> After your visit yesterday, the police at Barnet asked us to check character and so on. I was able to tell them that you weren't known officially to us, etc., and that was all above board. But they asked if we'd just have a look round the house. Does he? Your husband? He doesn't work at all, I'm afraid. He suffers from ill health. Oh, yes. I remember my wife mentioning it. Asthma, isn't it? Yes. Sometimes it's worse than others. My husband's. He sometimes uses it when he gets an attack. It's fairly dust free. No. Taking sides one way or the other. I, I keep out of it where my wife's concerned. Still, I suppose there's something in it. I think so. Well, you would, of course, yes. What about Mr. Savage? Does he go along? He believes in what I believe. Thank you. 
motorbike. It's William Savage, isn't it? William Henry. Oh, yes. My wife was, was trying to remember. How is she? She's all right, I think. None the worse, or a bit hot, perhaps. I kept looking at her whenever I could. You weren't followed, were you? No, I doubled back a couple of times, just in case. Hot, you say? Yes, nothing much. No, but you say it, hot. 
You hid the money, did you? Yes, what, what do you mean, hot? What I said, Billy, what I said. A bit hotter than usual, that's all. Yes, but what does that mean? It means, and do not shout at me, that she has a bit of a temperature, I suppose. It's nothing unusual in children. How would you know? We're both mad. Are you asleep? Myra, are you asleep? What is it? Come in here a minute. What's wrong? Well, come and look at her. With my uniform on. It doesn't matter. She won't look. Just, just come and look. You, you feel her forehead. Now, tell me that's normal. Yes, she is still very hot. Well, of course she's hot. I, I took her temperature. It's way up. Get another blanket there. Will I? I have to get a, a doctor. Billy, don't be stupid. What do you mean, don't be stupid? Where are you going? What's stupid about it? The child's ill and we've got to have a doctor. Look, don't walk away when I'm talking to you. What are you doing? I'm telling you what we've got to do. We've got to get a doctor. Look, put that down and listen to me for a minute. What are you looking in here for? You won't find the answer in a book. I'm telling you what the answer is. Are you, Billy? Are you? You know the answer. It's so simple, is it? We just call the doctor. Now, what should we say to him, do you think? Should we say that we've uh, borrowed a... Ch oh, you don't like that word, do you? Um, we'll say we've kidnapped a child and ask him to treat it in confidence. Is that what we should do, Billy? And we don't really know that there's anything wrong at all, do we? We'll get medicine for her in the morning. There's no harm that can come to her in a warm bed, is there? I don't know. I don't know anything any longer. Except you do know I'm right, don't you? That I'm right. Now we have to take turns to sit in with her. You want to take the first turn or shall I? I'll take it. Billy? Billy! What is it? The mother's disappeared. We can't hold your meeting this afternoon. We must put it off. I'm giving half the adult dose. You think that's all right? Once every four hours, that means one... Mara. Now and one at two-thirty. Mara, we must put it off. The very worst thing we could do is change the normal routine. But the baby will be in the next room. That's right, Billy. And you'll sit with her after you've got everyone in. We're not going to put it off, Billy. We'll just make people suspicious. I'm not putting it off.
Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Savage holding her usual meeting this afternoon. Oh, yes, won't you come in, please? Thank you. You haven't been before, have you? No, no, I haven't. May I have your name, please? Clayton. Mrs. Clayton. Upstairs, the, um, <coughs> the room's upstairs. Yes, I've just seen her. I thought she might come. But you can't with a child in here. You just can't. Oh, yes, Billy, yes. Oh, it's good that she's come, don't you see? It's good. It strengthens my connection. Now I can help her. I can help her, Billy. Now she can share my truth. Good afternoon. Shall we make our circle? Involved? No. What is it? He had a car. A red car. Going over a bridge. Going home. Happy. Oh, they're all singing. He sends his love. That's my friend. That's my darling. Take good care of all at number 43. I will, I will, my darling. We put flowers in your grave last Sunday, me and the girls. Somebody else? Wear it. Somebody on my left. Your guardian angel has put candles on both your knees, one on each knee, a white one on the left and a blue one on the right. He's telling you not to wear it. Mommy? You are wearing it. 
about a coral jet. No. About a child. Mommy. You're worried about a, a little girl. Mommy. Oh, yes. No need to worry. <laughs> no need. She's quite safe. She's being taken care of by three... three people who are concerned about her future happiness. Mommy. Oh, she's playing. She's happy. She... All the future is happiness. When, when will I see her again? What is it, Arthur? What? Arthur? Well, say it then, what? Please. When will I see her? Mommy. Please. No. When? Not. Not, uh, no. 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 <laughs> You'll be all right in a minute. It's all right, dear. You're all right. You fainted. Silly of me. You fainted? It's very silly. Yeah, just, just, just sit quietly for a bit. I think perhaps we'll stop it here for today. Yes, yes, of course, Mr. Savage. If um, someone could perhaps help me, I'll get her to her room. Yes, yes, of course. Let me. Mr. Savage, who is going to die? Die? Yes, you said the word. Who was it for? What's it to do with me? Nobody's dead. No, not dead. Die. I distinctly heard you say it. No. Nobody's dead. If you don't mind. Just see them out, dear. You, you, you're sure you'll be all right? Yes, I'm fine. I'm fine. I do apologize. Please accept my wife's apologies. She's overtired, I think. Oh, yes. Yes, of course. Oh. What do I owe, Mrs. Savage? Oh, nothing. Nothing, please. But I must. I... Well, I'll, I'll send her something through the post. Please, I assure you. Oh, no, I'd like to. You see, I, I am so worried, and she has given me some hope. Whatever my wife told you, I, I'm sure, will come true. You, you will thank her for me, won't you? Yes, of course. Oh, there you are. I was just going to call you again. Isn't it a wonderful afternoon? 
I'm always so surprised. It's so bright after a seance. Brightness just seems to fall from the air. Have you noticed? Yes. <laughs> no. You don't notice. Yes, I do. What is it you want to tell me? Arthur was very close this afternoon. He was so close. He kept talking about love. That was the word he used. <laughs> he was chattering on. I couldn't keep up with him. He so wants her to be happy. Her? Yes, the child. He's grown so fond of her since she's been using his room. That's what gave him the idea. Idea? What idea? Well, it's very simple, really. And as Arthur says, it's the answer for all of us. And for the plan. He says she doesn't really want to go back. <laughs> he says she'd be much happier with him. And then they'd have to take notice of me, wouldn't they? I mean, they couldn't ignore me. If we do what he says, it would make the whole thing that much more important. And he kept saying how much happier she'd be if we sent her to him. My Arthur. Arthur didn't say anything. You said it. It was you. It's what you've been thinking. It's it. you. It's all you. Well, of course he said it. Arthur well, doesn't. We... Arthur doesn't exist. He's never existed. He was dead. He didn't live. He was dead, Murray. He was born dead. You never saw him. I was the only one who saw him. They wouldn't let you see him. It's you, Murray. It's always been you. No. Yes, it has. It's no. what you want. No. Yes, this last thing was you. You thought no. of it. You're the one who wanted her to die. You thought of it. It's only in your mind. That's not true. You mustn't say that. That is not true. Arthur all. is dead. You've always wanted him so much, but he's dead. All those clothes you've got upstairs on the room, that's in your mind, too. You don't have to say it. You yes, I, yes, I have to say it. And you have to hear me. This time, you have to hear me. Please. Say it. Please. Arthur is dead. He was born dead. Billy, Go on, say it. Say it! No! I know he's dead. I know that. I do know that. But I do talk to him. And he does talk to me. Please don't make me say he doesn't talk to me. Please. I do and I see him. I am different. I do see him. That's why I want her. She makes me feel so much closer to him. That's why, Billy. Mara. Oh, Mara, what to do now? That's what I have to think about, what to do now. I have to think, I have to think. Billy. Mara, don't say any more. Billy. Just let me think. Billy, please. Just do this for me, so I can keep her. It wouldn't be fair to take away from me now. Mommy? Go back to bed. You catch cold. What were they all shouting about? Well, they, it, it was just a game. This isn't really a hospital, is it? Hospitals are all right. Oh. You stay in bed this time like a good girl. You'll be home soon, I promise. Left her door unlocked. Yes, Billy. Rushing in to see you. Yes, Billy.
she's seen you, Billy. She's seen your face. Do it for me, Billy. Then we can both be safe forever. See how easy it was, Billy? She didn't suffer. She didn't feel anything. She just went to sleep. Now she's safe with us. You don't want me to say that anymore, do you? But I won't. I promise you I won't. Because of all the things you've done for me. Billy, look at me. I won't ever forget. Just a few more hours, and I'll go and tell them where they can find her. And it'll all come true, just as Mummy sat down. Are you cold? You look cold. It's always cold in this room, isn't it? I mean, even in the afternoons when the sun comes in, it never really warms it up. Billy, we won't stay here once it's over. Once it's over, we'll go away. You'd like that, wouldn't you? We'll never quarrel again. I'll just do things to please you. Say you love me. You know I love you. I want to read over exactly what it is I want to say. That's the evening papers. Would you get it, Billy?
Superintendent Walsh. Good evening, Mrs. Savage. Very sorry to call you like this without warning. Oh, well, that's quite all right. Uh, you know uh, Sergeant Beadle, I believe. Yes, good evening, Mrs. Savage. Yes, we had a long talk a few days ago. Yes, well, as a matter of fact, that's why I'm calling on you. Once again, this is not an official visit as such. I just thought perhaps you might be able to help us a little further in your professional capacity. I'm sorry, I... Uh, the little girl missing from Barnard. You gave the parents some information, I believe. Yes, that's right. I... Before I go any further, Mrs. Savage, I think I ought to say that, of duty, I'm not an unbeliever. Matter of fact, I'm president of my local society for psychical research. Oh, are you? How very interesting. Yes, it is very. Well, I'm a very keen president. I have one or two papers published, nothing much, just our own magazine. They're mostly concerned with the coroner experiments. Oh. Oh, yes. Oh. Of course, I know the coroner experiments. Well, as I'm sure you know, they've followed them up in Austria with startling results. I went into it when I was there on holiday last year. Rather a busman's holiday, I suppose, but I like to get to the end of things. That's why I'm here. I wondered if you would consider holding a seance for me. Here? This evening? Well, if it's at all possible, we seem to have drawn a blank with orthodox methods, and since you did make contact before, you might be a great help again. Uh, of course, it's only a request. You're quite at liberty to refuse. What, um, what help do you think my wife could give you? Well, in a case like this, Mr. Savage, we are grateful for small mercies. And since your wife does appear to have powers beyond the ordinary, I'd like to make use of them. You already enjoy a very considerable reputation, Mr. Savage. Do I? Oh, yes, indeed. The news in our particular circle, if I may put it like that, may not travel widely, but it travels very surely. You want me to give you exact information about the little girl, is that it? Well, it doesn't have to be exact, Mrs. Savage. Just a clue, that's all we're looking for. And you want to have the seance now? If that's at all possible. Speaking as a policeman now, time isn't exactly on our side. Well, I uh, usually have a circle. Yes, but I, I thought we'd ask Beadley here and Mr. Savage. Oh, my husband isn't a regular sitter. Well, I don't think that matters. I'd like him to be on this one. Will you excuse me a moment? Do you suppose you can get the station on the car radio from here? Well, I can't say for certain, sir. You don't know? I'm not positive. But you think it's possible? Well, yes. I couldn't say for sure, sir. Right, you wait outside. Uh, so sorry. Uh, right, Mrs. Savage, if you'll show us where. Yes. This way, please. to do? No. It's a great help to me if we all give ourselves up completely and concentrate, but nothing special. I have no tricks. I'm sure you don't need them, Mrs. Savage. Could we all join hands? And now, 
concentrate on one thing. Empty your minds of everything except the subject. Everybody's waiting. Downstairs. We oh, have to be a good girl today. Good girl. No, no, no good saying you're tired. It's Sunday. You're never tired on Sunday. <laughs> Mummy, you got butter on your chin. Look! I'm standing at the top of the stairs. Look at me. Stop that shouting! No, I won't! I won't! No, don't! Don't make me go down the stairs again. Don't make me go today. I want to stay with Arthur. Arthur. You can't see him. You can't see him. You. They won't let me see him. Of oh, that waiting. Of oh, that. Nothing. Nothing to hold. Am I really guilty? Arthur, why are you waiting under the tree alone? In the dark? Why are you? Waiting there. <laughs> Mommy, why are you waiting under the tree? No, it's all different. I said die. Die? Room. Oh, she saw him. She saw Billy. She saw him. She saw him. Oh, yes. I'm coming, precious. I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm... Billy, you take her now. You take her, Billy. Take her. Kill that others waiting, Billy. Billy, kill that Billy. Take her. Oh, that's waiting. He's waiting, Billy. I'm coming. Precious, I'm coming. I am coming, Rena. You wait. No, it's all right. Wait, 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 wait. Wait for me. Wait for me.
you had the money, Mr. Savage. In the coal bunker. The garden. all right, is she? I put away the scouts to find her. Well, we've reached the conclusion of Seance on a Wet Afternoon, and we'd like to know, how's your anxiety meter? Oh yeah, you know, I mean, this movie truly is full of suspense Whew. and anxiety. Completely. <laughs> yeah. I mean, mine was pegging. Yeah. It was pegging. It's certain, you know, he's just, ugh. Yeah. I mean, you know, there's some really great, you know, tense scenes. Yes. Uh, you know, when the police show up, you know, uh, to do the check. I, that's where it started. Really, really started for me. I, I, I'm just, I'm just tense through that whole yeah. scene. Uh, and when he's going to, uh, to pick up the money, mm. that whole entire scene is just, you know, filled with great suspense. And then when he's taking the little girl, you're like, Yeah. What happened? Yeah. You know, you're, you're like, Oh, feeling the worst. There's moments where like, oh, you know, this little girl's gonna die. Uh, She's gonna die. Uh, you know. And you know, we're not usually that invested in the character where you're like, did they die? Right, yeah, exactly, you're yeah. Like, eh. You know, we're really worried. Yeah, we were worried. About this, yeah, I mean, you know, truly. Yes, yeah. we're like, man, Yeah. Why, why does he listen to her? I know, you know, and so many times, you know, we'll talk about movies and being you know, atmospheric or the wonderful mm. color in the movies. You know, this movie uh, is truly a beautiful, moody movie. Yes, and the black and white, Yeah. Just compliments. Yeah, um, you know, Kim Stanley. I can't say enough positive and great things about her acting in this movie. It's just, it's just, it's just top notch. It's absolutely yes. fantastic. Without a doubt, one of the most. I mean, Geraldine Page gets right under my skin. Yeah, but you know, Kim Stanley, she did. But then I felt bad for her. And I was mad. Yeah, it's like, poof. She takes you through the uh, range of emotions. She does. She does. I mean, you know, Richard Attenborough, again, absolutely 
spectacular. Yes. In this, and the two of them together, because this movie really is a lot of their dialogue yes. together. They're just fantastic together yes. in this movie. And in the end, you know, this movie, you find out that, you know, it is real. She is gifted with extra sensory. Yeah, um, it is supernatural. And I love that mm -hmm. about this ending. Um, you know, in the final seance, you know, you hear these whisperings going on and yes. you know, she knows, you know, the little girl isn't dead. You right. know? I love, you know, that they kept the supernatural aspect to this movie. You know, she wasn't just a sham. It wasn't right. just for notoriety. Yes. You know, it was supernatural. And you feel bad for her. You know what? This is one of those rare cases, you know, that I don't want to see either one of them go to prison. Yes, what they did was wrong. Completely. But I feel for both of them. I know, I know, because when she was given up, Billy, in the end, yeah. I was mad. Yeah. I was like, man, he did everything for her. Yeah. She gave and him she up. And she still gave him up. But then as she cracked, yeah. you feel for you her. You feel for her. You really do. And, and that's pretty amazing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because, you know, I think that with Patrick McGee at the table, the expressions on their faces, they all knew the score. Yeah, and Patrick McGee, you know, yes, it's a it's a small role here. I love Patrick McGee. Oh yeah. He's, it doesn't matter, you know, how big or small the role is. He's always good. He's always great yeah. to watch, yeah. yes. But this film is one of the rare forgotten films that is truly spectacular and that's amazing no one knows about it no um you know and oftentimes you know we'll say uh you know the sign of a great movie is if you would watch it again yes you know and in this case i will be watching this again oh there's no doubt yeah because there's a very good chance that we've all missed little i'm key, sure there is key things. yeah you know i'm sure there is um and this is this is the kind of movie I want to go back and watch yes. again. Yes. You know? And it is unsettling. It is. But it's great. It was fantastic. Yes. Yes, it was. And we thank you for being here with us at Newcastle After Dark. We hope you join us again for our lost treasure in cinema. And until next time, good, good night. night. Thank you.